Hello and welcome to our worship here at Dun and Hillside Church on Sunday the 23rd of May. <laughs> 2021. I had to check the date then. Today we celebrate Pentecost, Pentecost Sunday, often known as the birthday of the church. And it's the time when we recall the Holy Spirit descending upon the crowds that were gathered on that day of Pentecost. Pentecost, of course, being a Jewish festival. Being filled with the Spirit in that place. Each person able to hear the message of the love of God in their own tongues. People would have travelled from miles and miles around from countries all over the world to be there for this particular festival. And for each one of them to feel noticed and to have a sense of not only belonging but purpose. Having that message to take back with them to the areas where they lived and worked and and where they had some influence. So today we have a reminder that as church, however we're gathered, whether it's in person, whether it's online, that it's important for us to come together, to learn together, to worship God together and to pray that the Holy Spirit will descend upon us so that we are infused with the Spirit and able then to go out into our communities, into our workplaces, into our family, homes and settings. And we can preach through our words and through our actions, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, and the unconditional love of God. And so we come as we are, ready, expecting the Spirit to descend upon us, unsure of what that means, and yet still excited at the prospect. I think that first Pentecost that we celebrate as a Christian church was the beginning of many Pentecosts. I think that the the Holy Spirit is alive and does fill us up so that we can be poured out for others. And so as we gather for worship today, be prepared for the unexpected. Our call to worship, come out from the shadows And into the light of the morning, come empty and depleted to be filled with God's spirit. Come sober in sorrow and leave drunk with joy. Come expecting nothing but ready to be surprised. Above all, come and know that you are welcome here. Let's worship God.
Let's come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, as we greet you today, may we know your spirit rushing into our lives, surrounding us with love and with peace, with hope and with joy. There are no barriers that can prevent your spirit from entering our lives. And so we worship and adore you in the knowledge of that spirit surrounding us right where we are, transforming our lives and the world around. In the knowledge of your healing spirit, we confess that we have not always served you well. We serve you in fits and starts, singing your praises one moment, forgetting your goodness the next. God, keep us mindful of you so that we more fully see you at work in our every day and more readily respond to your invitation to be involved in that work. May your spirit keep on nudging us to love and serve you by loving and serving each other. And so let's join together our prayers, the prayers of our hearts, as we join together in saying the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Jesus taught us. And please use whichever version of the Lord's Prayer is most familiar to you, or you can use the words on the screen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. I want to share with you a reflection that was published in Spill the Beans. It contemplates the Holy Spirit and shows very cleverly how the Holy Spirit surrounds us each and every day. It's a chance to reflect on our days and our experiences, but it's also something to carry into the days to come as we open our eyes and become more aware of the Holy Spirit around us. It's not just true of this day of Pentecost, but always the Holy Spirit is with us. But is the Holy Spirit he or she? He. She. They always do your best encouragement of my father. The we'll get through this comfort of my mother. The companion. The guide. The spark. The buzz. The words that find your mouth when you think that you have nothing in your mind to give. The inspiration that comes from an otherwise normal encounter when you think that you have been useless. The touch on your shoulder that spurs you on when everything and everyone around you is weighing down on you. The friend who never leaves your side. The feeling that wakens you up at night that you know won't go away until you act upon it. The feeling that lets you sleep at night when you need sustenance. The feeling that brings comfort and challenge. The strength that picks you up when everyone else has knocked you down. The gentle voice that says, it's going to be all right. As well as, you need to sort yourself out. The motivator. The encourager. The enlivener. The sustainer. A gift, a beautiful gift. That is who my friend, the Holy Spirit, is to me.
Our reading today is taken from the New Testament, the book of Acts, chapter 2 and reading verses 1 to 21. Listen now for the word of God. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. At Pentecost, the people there experienced something like they had never known before. The wind blew around them. The sky seemed to open and flames descended upon them. But it wasn't just that day that they were changed. That day they had such a fire in their bellies that they had to leave that place and go on their way wherever they were travelling and tell that story of Jesus. They had to pass on the good news. There was an absolute imperative about it. They knew that they had been touched by God and that they had a job to do. It's very easy in our churches to become a little bit complacent, to feel as though church is something we go to rather than something we are together. And that we are called to take out from our buildings and out to the communities where we live. Pentecost is the reminder that we are called to move and not stand still. We are called to extend the kingdom of God as we go on our way. We're called to pass on that good news to whoever we meet, wherever we meet them. And we have work to do, but it's going to take all of us together. The people there had a fire in their belly and, and I'm about to introduce someone who has an absolute fire in his belly and a real passion for mission and a passion for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is our now former moderator. 
the very Reverend Dr. Martin Fair. And if this speech doesn't give you a fire in your belly, I'll be very, very surprised. Moderator. For as long as I am part of the Church of Scotland and have any kind of voice within it, I will call on it to announce and to be good news to the poor, liberty to the captives, sight to the blind. To be present with the downtrodden and the marginalized and the oppressed, and as scripture has it, the least of these. Why? Because that's what Jesus was about. And I've no interest in being part of anything which isn't primarily focused on making real today that which Jesus set in motion. And what will all of that look like in practice? It will be what we call the mission of the church. And might I say the much talked about five marks of that mission. Here are the last three of these. They're on my phone as a constant reminder. Number three, to respond to human need by loving service. Number four, to transform unjust structures of society, to challenge violence of every kind and pursue peace and reconciliation. And the fifth one, to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and sustain and renew the life of the earth. And so, in practice, I say this. Until the last food bank in Scotland is closed because there is no longer any need, we have work to do. For as, for as long as there are children growing up in Scotland whose life chances are at best compromised and at worst ruined because of their postcode, we have work to do. Until we can find more productive and humane and effective ways of dealing with those who break our laws, but in truth are usually victims themselves, we've got work to do. And it goes on. For as long as there is planning for the detention of even the increase in numbers of nuclear warheads on our shores, there is work for us to do. For as long as many of our impoverished communities continue to be awash with drugs, and we Scots continue to have the worst drugs death stats in Europe, there is work for us to do. For as long as there are despairing people struggling with poor mental health, having to wait months and even years for suitable treatment, there is work for us to do. And among them, for as long as there are any who sense that darkness is their only friend, to quote the psalmist, and to resort to ending their lives, there is work for us to do. I know that both His Grace, the Lord High Commissioner, and the First Minister are with me on that. And for as long as we continue to pollute our rivers, poison our air, and fill holes in the ground with our waste, there is work for us to do. For as long as anti-Catholic, anti-Irish bile is spewed onto our streets by so-called football fans, there is work for us to do in this nation until every person in Scotland and in those places where the Church of Scotland is present is treated according to who they are and not by the color of their skin and not by the place where they worship, there is work for us to do. For as long as people, predominantly young women, are trafficked into Scotland to work as sex slaves and in the off-the-books economy, there is work for us to do. And for as long as women of any age and from anywhere don't feel safe walking home at night, there is work for us to do. For as long as it's possible for someone seeking asylum, someone like Mercy Baguma, to die while supposedly in our care, there is work for us to do. For as long as there are lost souls sleeping rough in shop doorways, 
our families in dark, damp, substandard bread, bed and breakfast style accommodation, there is work for us to do. And yes, though it be far off and over there, for as long as the skies over the holy lands are ripped open by another barrage of rockets and mortars, and the overwhelming superiority of attacks from the air in some small way, yes, even for us, there is work for us to do. That's what it will look like, all of that and more, for us to give ourselves to the ways of the kingdom as set out by Jesus in his, here's why I'm here, manifesto. And so for us too. But here's the problem. Unless we get our act together and rapidly, there's hardly going to be any church left to do all of that. I've heard it so many times that for the church it's not about numbers. It absolutely will be about numbers if the numbers are so low that the church can no longer run cross-reach or local caring services because the local church is no longer there. So I long for the church to be about the kingdom work, yes, but oh boy, how we need the church to be refreshed and renewed and revitalized and remade and yes, reformed, that it might do so more effectively. I long for an alive, vibrant church, a church that has traded in the lukewarm and instead is passionate in its love for Jesus in such a way that many others will want a piece of that action. I long for a church empowered as it worships, a church shaped by the Word, alive in the Spirit, a church that knows itself called and sent, a church that is confident in the gospel in the face of both hostility and indifference, a church that teaches and baptizes and nurtures new believers in Christ. In other words, all of the five marks of mission, we better see to one and two if we're going to be any good at three, four, and five. It all has to hang together. So even as we let go of some of what, sadly, has passed its sell-by date, let's commit ourselves to planting new Christian communities that are low on maintenance, high on impact. And let's be better at identifying and equipping and commissioning pioneers, those who will go and work on the margins. And let's commit to every part of Scotland, but at the same time, crack on with the well-equipped spaces in the right places plan. And so deal once and for all with an over-dependence and abundance of buildings. And yes, mission to the whole of Scotland as per the third article, but maybe in new and creative ways, ecumenically for sure, and with an emphasis on Christian community and evangelical endeavor in every place. And let's get on with the reorganization that we've started out on. That the sooner we sort the structures, the sooner we get back to what really matters, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, the first of the marks of mission. Moderator, tomorrow is Pentecost Sunday, a day of fire. I believe the Holy Spirit is still in the business of starting fires. It's time for the church to start fanning those flames and to put away the fire extinguishers. The good news of Jesus Christ is not subject to a health and safety committee. Let the fire burn. That kind of church signed up to all that is meant by mission. I am absolutely up for that, and I hope and pray that the whole of the church indeed will be too. Moderator, thank you. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you that when we grieve and find it hard to pray, when we cannot find the words, your spirit intercedes with groans too deep for words. Spirit, 
intercede for us now. Sometimes we lose heart at all the suffering we witness, both near and far. But may we always see you where your children suffer, wherever the earth cries out in anguish. You, the God of all creation, Tear open the heavens and dwell among your people. Give us courage to go into all the places you already are. Remind us that nothing done in the name of love is ever wasted and that all we do for the least of these, we do for you. We pray for your healing for all of creation. We pray for unity in your church so that together with you we may heal the world. We pray for all who lead and give wise counsel. May they lead with justice and compassion and build on a foundation of love. And this week we pray for all who will be attending and servicing the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland. We pray that you will be in the thoughts, words and actions of all commissioners as we bring our whole selves and dedicate not just our time but our energy and passion into those matters which concern us most. May we do so in love and respect for one another and out of great concern for the whole of humanity and for the care of your creation. And we pray for all whom we know struggling this day with loss, with disappointment, with illness, with bereavement, with lack of hope and purpose. Spirit of God, blow change through our hearts, our lives, our world. Your kingdom come on earth as in heaven. Amen. Side
Friends, the the view behind me is a little different to what we normally have because I join you from my place at the General Assembly, sitting at my desk in front of two fairly old, albeit, um, laptops in order to follow the proceedings and to play my part in the General Assembly. I ask for your prayers for all involved in the General Assembly this week. I pray that we will make good decisions, decisions that are right and proper for not only the future of the church, but for the future generations. The church has always been important to me because of the intergenerational nature of it. Wherever I travelled in the world or in the UK, I could find a Church of Scotland where I would fit in amongst other generations. I had people that I looked to as parental figures. I had children who were like nieces and nephews to me. I had brothers and sisters around me of similar ages, but I also had grandparent-like figures who I love and cherish. They have been a wonderful source of support and comfort to me in difficult times and difficult places. It is my passion, my desire, that the Church of Scotland continue well into the future, And that might mean some change. It absolutely should mean some change. We don't know exactly where we're headed. But what I do know is that I have a passion for sharing the love of our God. I have a love of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I will keep talking about that Holy Spirit, especially on this day of Pentecost. But every day. For it's the Holy Spirit working through us, working in us, who can enable us, our helper. Our helper who helps us to discern our faith and discern our path, our calling. So this is a very special week and I'm really glad that you've been able to join me for part of that in our worship today. So now, our blessing. Sisters and brothers in Christ, go into the world. Realise the visions. Fulfil the dreams. See new visions. Dream new dreams. And as you do, know that the Holy Spirit is guiding you and encouraging you every step of the way. 
And now, may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all, those we love and those whom we struggle to love, both now and evermore. Amen. Friends, because this is General Assembly Week, things are a little different. So I'm afraid there'll be no cuppa and chat session on Wednesday, no midweek worship on Wednesday either. And next Sunday, our uh, in-person worship will be led by Gavin Drummond. We're really excited to welcome Gavin back. I'm afraid for those of you online, you'll be stuck with my dulcet tones as usual. But there'll be no cuppa and chat next Sunday. Today, um, that's Sunday the 23rd of May, you will have the opportunity to join me and others for a cuppa and chat on Zoom at 12.15. And if you need some help getting involved in that, please do get in contact with me. My details can be found at the end of the service. I hope that I will see you again soon. But until I do, stay safe and God bless.